Welcome to Bird Burger. Three weeks ago, we hosted the first ever wildlife photography competition judged live here on YouTube. We had hundreds of amazing submissions to the competition, but one person in particular stood out above all the rest. Nathan Watson won the Birdscape and Creative category and the title of 2022 Bird Burger Photographer of the Year. So today, I'm honored to be having my guest, Nathan Watson, today on the channel. Nathan, how are you doing? G'day, Jeremy. I'm doing well, thank you, and uh, and thanks for uh, for having me on your channel. Really, really honoured to uh, to join you today. Yeah, most definitely. You must be feeling a uh, cloud nine after winning not only one but two categories, <laughs> and then also the grand prize award for um, the competition. Man, your images were just stunning. Uh, they were incredible and super cool to see, and I know a lot of people really enjoyed them. So you just have some amazing work, and I'm super. Super honored to have you on here today as well. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it was very unexpected. Uh, a nice surprise to, to win those awards. Uh, there were some amazing uh, images entered and congratulations to everybody else who, who were shortlisted and, and won prizes. Uh, you know, it was really encouraging to, to see the judges enjoy my work and uh, it's, uh, yeah, very unexpected, but, uh, but thank you. We had a little bit over 300 photos submitted to the first annual Bird Burger competition. Initially, when I received them, I sent them over to the judges, and when I received them back, I saw that there was something like seven or eight of yours that had made it into the finals across all the categories combined, and it was kind of funny. I was just laughing to myself, thinking like, man, this guy, this is going to be crazy. I know he's going to wind up winning something throughout it, and sure enough, you uh, did wind up winning something, uh, to say the least. For the judges, it was still a total surprise because it was all anonymous for them, but for me, it wasn't really a surprise at all when I saw the results. Um, but clearly, you have a knack for taking some amazingly creative images. Specifically, I think you have an eye for unique types of images that aren't maybe commonly taken in the creative category specifically, which is the competition that you, or the, the category that you dominated. Um, would you mind sharing a little bit about maybe your thought process when you're out in the field and how you wind up getting these kind of creative and unique shots? Thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jeremy. I think it's really a mindset of when, you know, when I head out into the field, I am looking for opportunities where I can capture something more artistic. I mean, that's the style that I lean towards. I, I, I'm drawn towards uh, artistic uh, images and, and that's what I strive to capture myself. So um, lots of common birds. I'm not afraid to sort of look at those birds that are that are more common, and we see them sort of every day. But always looking for a unique uh, or artistic way to capture capture mm. them, whether it's a portrait or their behaviour or it's the environment. And I've got to know my, know my local area uh, really well. So often, you know, when I'm heading out on a shoot, it's 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 thought through in terms of. Uh, deciding where I'm going. Um, I, I have a bit of a, a picture of in my mind of the type of image I'm looking for because I'm looking at the weather forecast. I might be expecting a cool foggy morning so I'm going somewhere very deliberate to hopefully get those conditions. Um, and and sort of working my local area a lot, I've got to understand the different lighting conditions in, in the places where I go. So depending on the time of the year or the time of day, I've got an understanding of what the light is likely to do um, before I head out there. So I'm thinking through all these things before mm. before I head to these locations. And um, and then, you know, serendipity comes into effect. And, and if you're there and you've done a bit of planning, uh, sometimes luck goes your way. Yep. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, those are some great thoughts. I love what you're saying about learning how can you kind of master even the common birds in your area and present them in a new and creative and unique way. And I feel like actually a lot of times even those common birds, quote unquote, that we see all the time are actually a lot easier to capture in a creative way because you know them so well, you know, their behaviors are more predictable according to what you know. I feel like I can tell that... Um, you know, you were talking about locally, you're very familiar with the area. Like I know when I have seen your images, whether that be on your Instagram account or wherever else, um, I see kind of like, you know, patterns of like understandings of how you've mastered the light you were talking about in those scenarios. That's super cool. Um, like I know, for example, you've taken a few images. I don't know if it's on a lake or a, uh, a pond or a bay in the ocean or what it is, but where you take them like either at dusk or dawn, I'm not quite sure, but you have, you know, those amazing city like bokeh balls in the background. And that's definitely comes down to a lot of foresight and planning, like you said, and knowledge of your area. And so that's super cool. 
Yeah, thank, thanks, Jeremy. Most of those are taken at, at dawn. I, I do very little uh, dusk photography because I just don't, I just don't get the time. Um, I would love to do more dusk photography, but most of my images are taken uh, at dawn. And uh, yeah, look, you know, working with urban lights is something that I've really focused on as a bit of a, a challenge over the last uh, last year, particularly. And and we've got uh, some some locations. Uh, around our city, where I've got the opportunity to to, to work with city lights and birds, and and uh, this coming this coming summer, particularly with the shorebirds, I'm actually really looking forward to challenging myself to uh, to try and get more shorebirds in in the city lights. So your your migratory uh, waders and and those sorts of species would be really fun. But I know how difficult that's going to be <laughs> in such low light. You know they're they are small, fast little birds, and you're generally operating with very low shutter speeds in those conditions. And uh, so it's going to be it's going to be a challenge. But I do enjoy challenging myself and <laughs> and try to you know I try to come up with a with a vision for what I want to achieve, and uh, and I'll keep having a, a crack at it until I'm satisfied that that I'm mastering what I'm trying to do. Mm, yeah, that's good. I love that. How um, how long have you been doing wildlife photography, and how do you think that it shaped your vision through the eye of a camera? I've been doing bird photography for less than less than three years, um, and uh, it's something that's been a just a huge uh, sort of learning curve, and and it's become a, a passion uh, quite quickly. So. But I think I was fortunate. My background, my career background, is in in print media, and mm. uh, and I spent fifteen years working in in newspapers and, and editing uh, publications. So I got an opportunity to work really closely with a lot of press photographers and some extremely good press photographers. And as as the person responsible for um, making decisions around the images that you publish, you get a you get an understanding of composition and storytelling and photography. So I had. Mm. I, I had a fortunate sort of grounding in photography through my career that I think allowed me to make that transition easier. But I have to say, the first time I picked up a, a professional camera, I started with a Canon 5D Mark III, and uh, I'd been used to taking, you know, happy snaps of my family or my pets or, you know, flowers or whatever took my interest at the time, and everything's in auto modes and they're, they're cheap little point-and-shoot cameras. So mm. I'd never really used a professional camera um, until I picked one up in, in November 2019. I got my first camera, and I had to start this whole journey of learning of how <laughs> to actually take photography myself and, uh, and do it manually. Um, and I put so many hours into just learning the the uh, you know the settings on my camera and how to use them uh, and watching so many YouTube tuition videos around uh, wildlife photography and, and bird photography specifically because that's what grabbed my interest to understand how to take a good bird photo and so I've invested a lot of time in in learning myself mm. um, and then tried to translate that into the field just with lots of practice. I think a lot of people. Um really enjoyed you know your photography th throughout the whole event but i'd really love to talk about specifically your winning image of the whole event um because i know that there's a lot of people who would be curious maybe what is uh you know what was the story behind it how is your vision in terms of capturing it can you tell me a little bit of the story behind that image and how you wound up capturing that maybe if you had some you know um planning thoughts ahead of time like you were talking about going out on the foggy morning or whatever that may be i think uh they'd love to hear about that so there were some really ethereal conditions that morning, and I almost missed it. It's uh, it's uh, <laughs> a, probably a common story for most of us wildlife <laughs> photographers. I I had uh, I had actually planned to go out that morning, and I knew the conditions to that I was expecting. You know, looking at the forecast, it was going to be really cool. Um, there was very little wind, so I knew the harbour would be still, and there was likely to be you know that sense of of cool atmosphere with a bit of mist and those sorts of things, and. Uh, but I'd had a big week. I was pretty tired. I went to bed and <laughs> my alarm went off when I'd set it for the next morning and I I almost didn't get out of bed. And I thought <laughs> to myself, you know what, if you don't get out of bed, you're going to miss some pretty awesome conditions because I could see, you know, through the window that it was exactly as I expected, a bit of mist. And, and uh, so I, uh, I pushed myself out of bed and um, the harbour's about... It's probably about a 15-minute drive from home. So I got down there just before first light and um, 
got myself in position uh, and uh, sort of just laid there, and, and it's just an amazing spot for watching uh, the uh, the great egrets. Mm. Um, and I've been there and done it many times, and some mornings they're active and some mornings they're not so active. It just depends. Um, on this particular morning, it was uh, one of the most productive shoots that I've done. And it's a really uh, a great location because, uh, you know, within a... a uh, uh, within my sort of peripheral vision, there were lots of different lighting conditions because I've got, you know, the topography of the hillsides, I've got the sunrise. And so, you know, whether I shoot to my right uh, or shoot to my left, I can get very different shots. So on, in the space of about 20 minutes on that morning, uh, I got about seven or eight shots that on any other day I would have been really, really happy to go home with. And they were a combination of the, the winning image in a little bit of uh, you know soft light in the misty morning, um, I got some silhouettes in some in some golden misty light. I got some backlit flight shots. Um, I got some high key backlit shots, um, and I got some hunting behaviour with uh, with the egrets catching fish and the fins of the fish backlit as well. So mm. it was just such a cool morning. But that I thought that image. Uh, that image has been one of my favourite images since I captured it, and uh, there's a bit of a sequence of shots of that egret coming in to land, and mm. there are some other shots in that sequence that I really, really like too. But it was such an amazingly calm, still morning, and the way that egret flew in and just touched down in the water, <laughs> and you can see that in the photo, he, he has barely caused a ripple when he's he's yeah. landed in the water, and and it was just, uh, I just thought that image just captured the the conditions and the atmosphere on that morning so well. Mm. And every time I look at it, that whole experience just comes, you know, the memory just comes flooding back. It, it's, uh, it was one of those, one of those shots. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. I feel like I can just picture the scene and feel myself immersed in the scenario, even as you're describing it. And yeah, man, that that image like the foreground water leading up to it you can tell it was a calm morning it was just peaceful and it's amazing how such a big bird like that yeah it just makes the tiniest little ripples in the water and so cool to hear and man you did you did not think when you um almost hit snooze on that alarm that that morning that that image would wind up being a one thousand dollar image for you huh <laughs> no, not at all <laughs> so yeah i guess that made it worth it getting up early but man it is yeah, tough it sometimes getting yeah. up early <laughs> It's a, it's a favourite image, as I say, and and I took that image in April last year, so it was some time ago now. And uh, I've entered it in a few contests because I really love it, and it hasn't done particularly well, but that's okay. I I love the image, and uh, and I thought I'd give it one last crack at uh, competition success, and it it came through. So there we go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, most definitely. That's awesome. Congratulations on that again. Such a good image. I'd, I'd also love to know actually a little bit about the image that won the creative category, because this great egret image that um, you had won the birdscape category and went on to win the grand prize, right? Um, but you also had an image that won the creative category contest, and it's very simple in its silhouette form. Um, where it feels on first glance very simple, but there's actually a lot of really cool intricate details in it, whether that be um, what some of the judges were mentioning during the competition of how the turn is kind of, they're turned opposite ways, the two turns from each other, or you just have small little details on how they're balancing each other in the frame or other aspects like that. Um, I think it's so easy as a wildlife photographer to just constantly want to shoot at kind of like normal exposures, for lack of a better word, and not want to risk those types of creative shots and exposures like those silhouette shots. Um, how do you recognize scenarios like this? And when is it effective to switch into a more creative exposure? That's a great question, Jeremy. And, and you know, that that's uh that scene was i think trond made the comments when he was judging that that's the scene that you see so often and um uh, and there's a bit of a backstory to that image too which i can go into uh sort of in a minute but i think look it just comes down to lighting and and intuition I, you know when you're out in the field a lot and 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 you've got that artistic mindset you will you'll see opportunities for silhouettes and it's hard to explain but you know, it comes down to the light and generally it's very early in the morning or late in the evening when you've got some beautiful colours to work with and, and you use the light to advantage. I think what's really appealing about silhouettes is that um, that there's, there's, uh, there's this sense of uh, 
well, you're working with shapes, you know, you, you, and, and you're trying to get uh, images of birds that you can identify even though you haven't exposed it normally. Um, so you can look at it and, and from the silhouette, you, you still know what the animal is or you still know uh, what, the bird, what the bird is. So um, it's difficult here where we are with our topography. I don't get a lot of opportunities for silhouettes because very late in the evening and, and very uh, sort of early in the morning, we've, we've got a lot of hillsides and things, so I don't get a lot of opportunity to get uh, you know the birds against a setting sun or a, or, a, or a rising sun. The location where I was there is one of those few locations locally where I, where I can do that. It's a place called Chains Beach. It's about a 40 minute drive mm. from home. And my wife and I had made a spontaneous decision to go there for the weekend with our one year old daughter. Um, it's listed in one of Australia's top 100 birding destinations. Some of Australia's rarest mm. birds are there. Um, and some of them I still haven't seen. I've heard them, but haven't seen them. So one day, hopefully, I'll get lucky. But um, there's these great, there's these great big granite uh, boulders uh, down on the on the foreshore. And I'd been down there and done a bit of scouting the evening b- before. There's a huge flock of terns, and they're they're always there. And and I've taken a lot of standard exposures of them in flight and portraits and done lots of things but after a while you get quite quite bored with that so again I was sort of scouting it looking for trying to think through some creative ideas that I could do and uh and I noticed that they were all congregating on this big uh, sort of granite boulder that would be backlit by the sunrise the following morning so I just crossed my fingers and hoped that they would they would be at the same location the following morning. I got up early, went down there before sunrise, and sure enough, they were. But it was incredibly difficult. Like, there were dozens and dozens of birds, and they're coming and going and, and from fishing, and, and trying to get a pleasing composition was so hard. And I, and I got uh, several hundred images, and there's some nice shots amongst them, but this one, this one really stood out because it was one of the few opportunities where I was able to isolate mm. a couple of birds. And using that big granite cliff um uh was uh you know just just created such a unique uh composition and um the bird that's flying overhead is actually coming in to land on a boulder behind that cliff so he's not actually coming in to join the turn on the mm. ledge in front um but I've tracked him as he's come through and as he's passed the turn on <laughs> the boulder that's uh that's perched on the boulder has looked in his direction and I mean, that was just luck. I didn't even <laughs> see that that had happened when I took the frame. But then you go back through your series of shots and I was like, that, that is the shot. You know, there's a bit of engagement between the birds um, and, uh, you know, the bird in flight was perfectly silhouetted. So you could see the wing outlines, you could see the toes, you could see the, the form mm-hmm. of the head. Incredible. Uh, and I was like, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the shot. And... The colours were that intense on the morning, you know, switching into, you know, the settings to get a silhouette. It, that that image is almost straight out of the camera. I've done very little processing to that, that image. It was it was virtually exposed wow. to the camera. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. I love that. That's so interesting how you would never know because it's a silhouette image that uh, it was going to land on a boulder. It looks like it's going straight down to land on the same rock. Yeah. That's incredible. So that's super cool. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you ever... Yeah. miss shots because you're going for a more creative type of exposure like this oh no doubt that happens um no doubt that happens but i think you've got a challenge well you know i like challenging myself and and as i say i've got a i've got a uh, uh i tend to lean towards the artistic style, style of things so i i would much rather go home um and not have a shot um knowing that i've tried to get something mm. unique and and I always learn from that experience. So, you know, sometimes it, it doesn't come off when you're trying these artistic images, but, but you're learning from that experience. You go, okay, I, you think about it afterwards, I made these mistakes. Or sometimes it's just the fact that the subject you're working with doesn't doesn't conform to what you're trying to do. And and that's okay. So you come back and you try again and and you approach it with the learnings from the previous shoot. And uh, And I've done that a few times and eventually it, it pays off. Um, but there's, yeah, look, there's no doubt that there are probably some lovely shots mm-hmm. occasionally that I miss because I'm looking for an opportunity to do something different or work with the light in an artistic way. Mm. Um, but I'm okay with that. You're okay with that. I love that, what you were saying. And I love how you were saying that, yeah, uh, that desire and kind of wanting to grow and kind of push yourself 
Um, man, that is so valuable. And I mean, it shows, right? I mean, it shows when it's showing when, you know, out of hundreds of submissions, um, you wound up winning what you did. Um, and so it shows that that desire to kind of grow and kind of push yourself and see what's next for you skill wise really pays off. And, um, yeah, I think that there's a lot of value in that. Getting a little off topic from your work specifically, I'd love to hear really quick, um, from you about what kind of your perception was of the Bird Burger Awards as a whole and what you thought of maybe the event and the other photos submitted as well. It was an interesting concept, and when I saw you promoting it, I, I made the decision to enter enter a few images and, and see how I go. Look, I've always been drawn to uh, competitions, not for the success, but I think that they help to drive my development as a, as a photographer, and you get to see lots of other great mm. work, and, and look, it's very subjective, and um, you know, there's some wonderful images and, and on any given day, different people like different things and, uh, and sometimes you're successful and sometimes you're, you're not. And that's okay too. It's, a, it's about, uh, you know, looking at your, your, your work and how it stacks up against what others are doing and, and, and hearing and seeing the opinions of judges. And that's what I was looking forward to most with this particular format. Uh, you don't often in competitions, other mm. than seeing what's shortlisted and what wins, you sort of got to deduct uh, feedback from the judges through the choices that they make. But the opportunity you provided was to see mm. some live judging and and, uh, and and all the judges that you chose are people who I've been following on YouTube for a long time or since I started photography more or less and, um, and, and really enjoy their perspectives on photography and, and Josh particularly, his, his philosophies on photography is something that I have found very, very relatable. <laughs> Um, and so I, w I was really excited about yeah. the opportunity to just put some images in front of the judges and hear what they thought about them, whether I did did well or, or not. Um, so I was really looking forward to that. I think you did an amazing job. I can imagine how difficult it was to <laughs> to pull uh, pull all that together. A lot of work, um, but it went off really smoothly. And it was a lot of fun to. Uh, it was a late night for me, but a lot of fun to sort of sit there and, and watch the process. Um, and hear some wonderfully encouraging comments from the judges, but also see the work that others had entered. There were some really inspiring images, and and I'd like to make mention of Christopher Smith, Christopher Smith uh, particularly, mm -hmm. and his image of of the cormorant um, in the portrait category. Just a beautiful, beautiful image, and 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 Chris should be really, really proud of that that shot. Um, it's one, uh, it's an image that I wish I had taken. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> um, you know, por portraits aren't something that I generally uh, sort of lean to awards um but you know that's just a beautifully artistic portrait and 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 sort of is is the type of image that i i found find really appealing and uh he should be very proud of that shot yeah that that image is incredible i was stunned by that image when i saw that and the crazy thing is too he's actually only i believe like 17 years old he's really young what a fantastic image wow. and his potential is just through the roof right now <laughs> so Lots, of, clearly lots of talent. He'll do very well. Yep, yeah. most definitely. But yeah, phenomenal image. And um, yeah, I loved everything you shared. That's that's really cool. And that was definitely part of my hope. Um, my Part of my hope with the judging, doing it live, was number one, to provide transparency because sometimes it feels like when you're submitting to a competition, it can feel a little bit like, um, I don't know the word for it. And I don't want to like say this as if it's pointed towards anyone, but it can just feel a little bit like, um, maybe biased or things like that just because you you feel so much like an outsider and like you just submit and then that's it you know um so one of my goals was to make it feel like you are a part of this and you're like you're in it and you get to see really that like transparently what the judges are kind of thinking um as much as possible because if we would have gone through every image again that would have been that would have been a 48 hour <laughs> uh live viewing so we couldn't do that but realistically yeah. we wanted to be able to show some that way it felt a little bit more tangible um and also gave a lot of insight for people to kind of see what judges you know are looking at what they're kind of picking out um and stuff like that and so that's cool and i love what you said about how um more than anything you're not doing it to succeed so much or things like that but really what you're doing it for is to kind of just push you to the next level and kind of just uh make sure you're you know constantly striving for a little bit more talent and a little bit more growth in your own personal journey so that's some really good stuff that you shared there talking about josh so josh actually had a really good question on a previous podcast that i had with him he asked um 
after you win a competition, where do you kind of go from there as a wildlife photographer? Um, what's in it next for you in wildlife photography and what does winning an event like this mean for you? Um, and so, yeah, uh, I'd love to kind of just ask you that question is now that you've, you know, won this competition. Um, and I don't know if this was your first ever that you've won kind of like the grand prize for or not, but now that you've won this competition, um, does that change your mindset at all as a wildlife photographer? Um, and, um, do you kind of see anything in the future kind of, you know, readjusting your kind of vision or your direction or anything like that? It's a great question. Um, but I, I go back to my point that, that I don't do photography for competitions. So I'm, I'm drawn to competitions. It's, a, it's, uh, it's something that I enjoy participating in. And I think it's had a big influence on my development as a photographer because I'm looking at other people's so it's some very high caliber images and I'm studying those images and looking at why they're good. And, um, and sometimes I have a bit of success and that's a huge honor. And I'm really honored to win, win the bird burger competition. Um, yeah. but first and foremost, I'm taking images for my own enjoyment and, mm. uh, and, and, and it would be easy and, and it can be easy if you're too focused on, on the competitions and you don't do well, you know, that, that can get you down. And, and so it, it's important to have sort of a grounded, uh, you know, grounded thinking around these sorts of things. There's so many great images out there. Um, people are, are doing some amazing work and uh, at the end of the day, it's very subjective. And if you're not successful, that doesn't in any way mean you haven't taken a good image. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's, I like to challenge myself and it's all about the artistic side of photography. I mean, uh, nature in itself is so creative and I think, you know, through our cameras and our lenses, we can show some of that creative side of nature in an artistic way. And, and that's what I strive to do. Um, I get I get a real kick. I get on a high when I, you know, you're out in the field, you've, you've put a little bit of thought or a little bit of planning into what you're doing. The conditions come together, the subject works for you, and then you look on the back of the camera and you know you've nailed the shot. And you get such a buzz from that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I just enjoy sharing that work with others. Um, and if I think it's competition worthy, it'll go in a, into a competition. But at the end of the day, you know, that great e egret image, like I said uh, sort of earlier in the interview, I've entered that in a few competitions competitions and it's never ever been shortlisted but it's always remained one of my favorite images mm. so um i think uh i think uh, use competitions to to help you grow and to push yourself and challenge yourself and particularly if you're driven to improve and not everybody is um but but i'm certainly one that has a bit of an obsessive and perfectionist <laughs> personality mm -hmm. and so when i turn my attention to something and i'm passionate about it i i give it 110 percent and uh strive to get my skill uh in that uh particular passion to to the highest standard that i can and and so i use competitions in that context yeah ditto i'm the same when i get when i get excited and passionate about something i go 100 percent on it as well and uh yeah you're right some people definitely um don't have that same kind of motivation for doing wildlife photography some people just like to go out and just just be present out in nature or see, you know, what types of birds they can see, whatever. And so there's so many different reasons, but definitely for, for someone that's geared like you, um, it sounds like, and definitely geared like me. Um, yeah, that's striving and constantly wanting to improve and grow is something that's really cool about competitions and really excites me as well. Um, so yeah, if I wasn't hosting it, I definitely would have been submitting images myself, <laughs> but, uh, that might be a little bit unfair if I submitted images myself. So, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, so great stuff. I, I love everything you shared. I would love to ask you this kind of question in closing. Um, I often ask the question to uh, wildlife photographers what they consider to be the single most important thing to know in their wildlife photography. And so I'd love to ask you the same thing. What do you think if you had to choose just one thing, what is the single most important tip that you could give to others to improve their wildlife photography? Jeez, uh, one thing. Um, I had two thoughts. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, Everyone cheats look, too. Everyone hear, says two thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, probably, I think the first point I'd like to make is you have to enjoy what you do. And it goes back to the mm. point I was just making then. You're not doing this for others. And, and in this age of social media, when you're putting image up on, on Instagram or whatever platform you're on or you're entering competitions, it's really easy to let that affect your the, the mindset that you have about your photography and to, to start to compare yourself too much. And 
and it b- becomes competitive. And and I I would just I'd encourage people to say you you you've got to do it to enjoy it first and foremost. And and I had to reset my mindset. You know, in that first year um, that uh, that I started photography, I, I let that perfectionist sort of mindset get in the way. And uh, mm. you know, I was looking at other people's images a lot and striving to be as good. I I I had confidence in my ability to grow and be that good, but. I was I would go out in the field and when I'd come home without an image that I was happy with I'd get really dejected about it and and I got to this point where I realized that's not what I want to get from my photography it's okay to be driven it's okay to challenge yourself and it's okay to strive to be as good as you can be but that shouldn't be at the expense of your enjoyment and so yeah. I had to reset myself and go you know what it is cuz I'm a photographer foremost and and I've I've learned birding and learned about birds through my uh love for photography Mm. So I've gone, you know, it's an opportunity to get out in nature and enjoy nature and uh and and that's the priority. And and there's nothing better than getting up early in the morning and seeing the world wake up and you're you've got a beautiful sunrise, you've got a bit of mist around or, or whatever the conditions are, and you get out there and even if you don't get the shot, it's just such a great time of the day to be out and, and see the birds active and, and you get to see things that, that you would never see otherwise. And you know what, you might not get a photo of it you might see an osprey diving for a fish but he's too far away to get the shot but (laughs) you've seen and witnessed something extraordinary Mm. um that you wouldn't have seen otherwise so it's okay if you don't get the shot it Mm. is absolutely okay and and by being out in nature and going to these places you're learning and that helps your photography and once i reset my mindset i actually started to take better photos Mm. um because i wasn't so uh, I wasn't so, uh, you know, focused on getting the shot. I was more aware of what was around me. I was starting to, um, to learn more about the habitats I was in and the light, and and it just it just completely changed the way I approach things, and it, and it benefited my photography. So that would be my first tip, and my second tip, real quickly, is you hear a lot about patience in wildlife photography, and absolutely there is an <laughs> element of patience, but persistence persistence is more important Mm -hmm. so and and that comes that comes back to the the learning experiences you might go out on a particular day with a particular shot in mind and and the conditions are right and you could sit there all day and you've shown the patience to get the shot but it doesn't happen (laughs) that's where the persistence comes in and you come back time and time again until it falls in your favor Mm. and um you'll get you'll get more uh, you'll get more high quality shots from persistence than you will from patience. Mm. Yeah, most definitely. That's great. Um, yeah, that is so good. I think that uh, I can't tell you how many times, uh, even on the films, you know, that you watch on uh, YouTube on my main channel or stuff like that over on my main channel where I'm telling cinematic stories of my days. Um, I can't tell you how many of those it was like first day, nothing, second day, like nothing, third day, got something or, you know, so on and so forth. And there's so many where it's like pre the hours of filming that I'm putting into those videos, like it didn't turn out for a while. And then like, it finally did. So I made a video on it, you know? (laughs) Um, So yeah, there's so many times like that. You're so right on that. Persistence is just so key. And um, it's just essential to being a good wildlife photographer. And also, like what you said, learning to be content regardless with your work is so powerful, too, and so transformative. I love how you were sharing that. And that's some very solid stuff. So thanks for sharing. You're welcome, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, most definitely. It was an honor getting to have you on. Again, congratulations on uh, becoming the 2022 Bird Burger Photographer of the Year. And uh, yeah, super excited to see what is in store for you and everything else moving forward. Uh, it's been fantastic, Jeremy. I look forward to next year's competition if you've got the uh, <laughs> the energy, yep. the energy to do one. And uh, look, keep putting out great content. I've been following your channel for for some time, and you do some great videos, and uh, they're really inspiring. And it, it's it's really it's really good to be able to see the experiences that that someone else is uh, is having. And and I know a lot of effort goes into creating those videos and sharing those experiences, and it's always a lot of fun to watch. Uh, so yeah, thanks for, uh, for the, the effort that you put into creating content for, for the bird photography community. Well done. Most definitely. Thanks so much, Nathan. Appreciate it. If you guys want to check out Nathan's work, I'd highly recommend going to check out his Instagram in the description below. He has some amazing wildlife photography images and it'd be awesome if you can go check him out and support him 
as well. If you guys haven't seen the 2022 Bird Burger Live Awards already, make sure to check out the link in the description below as well to check that out. And I'll see you guys around next time.